uh, something of a recap. Um, experiences happen. Qualia seem to be as real as anything gets. Um, experience seems to have components both internal and external. I see things and I put value on those things that I see, or I feel things and I put value on those things that I feel. Suffering I put value on, or perhaps suffering has value, um, because when suffering happens to me, I feel bad. Um, if I take a big stick and smack it against a rock, I don't feel much except for maybe a little bit of vibration in my hand. When I do the same thing to my leg, um, suddenly there's a great deal more value attached to that. So, smacking something with a stick is not phenomenally a value equation. Smacking my leg with a stick is. Um, by the same token, um, walking up and giving that rock a great big kiss is probably not going to have the same value as me walking up and giving, say, a Playboy centerfold a great big kiss. Uh, the one has different value from the other. <coughs> Now, something in me wants more of the plus type value and less of the negative type value. I want to avoid the negative stuff and I want more of the positive stuff. Where we seem to be getting tangled is in the what follows from that. Something wants. Something wants less of one thing and more of another. And I'm not talking about less of any particular uh, event, but they want less of this particular experience. I use the example of an inevitable case of extinction, okay, which I believe uh, the metaphor that I used was a gas chamber, and I believe that that's essentially our existence here. This place that we live in is essentially a gas chamber that will one day asphyxiate us. <laughs> uh, there's a jolly metaphor, eh? Now, what do we do about that? We rebel up until the last possible sec second against this, or we try to get some positive value out of that fact. We know that it's possible to get negative value out of it. For example, if I decide I'm not going to die. <laughs> Uh, that gas is not going to kill me. End of story. Well, you don't have control over that. It is going to kill you. It might not kill you in one second. It'll kill you perhaps in ten seconds or maybe longer. Uh, presumably long enough for you to get to the door and smash your hands to pieces and perhaps kill a few people that stand between you and the door but the gas will kill you. Um, same as life itself. The clock will eventually kill you. Um, you might not die in one hour, ten years, fifty years. Die, you will. <laughs> um, you can rebel against that. You can surrender to blind panic at the inevitability of your demise. Or you can not surrender to blind panic at the inevitability of your demise. You can accept um, the horror of it all. You can say, there is nothing in this existence but fear anxiety, agony, pain, etc. 
it. So I'm just going to surrender to that fear pretty much permanently. And up until the moment that the breath leaves my body, I will live in a, in a state of existential panic. I have felt existential panic, and I can see how someone could actually go that way. Um, I've never spent a great deal of time in a hospital watching people die, but it always fascinated me what people go through when they see the Reaper enter the room. Is it, well, I knew you were coming, <laughs> hello, or is it, oh God, I still must resist. I don't know. <laughs> I will know, I guess, presumably. <clears throat> assuming I have any any advance warning. Like, assuming that I don't get uh, killed by a dropping piano that I don't see. But, inasmuch as I can anticipate that moment, <clears throat> I have options. I have the option to um, surrender to blind panic. I have the option to surrender to negative experience, to sort of say, this is a fight I can't win. So the only thing I can possibly do is give in to horror. I have that option. I have that option of attempting not to I have that I have the option of attempting to seek out non horror, to seek out things like joy, happiness, contentment, equanimity, humble uh, humility, whatever you want whatever terms you want to use for the cardinal virtues, if that's a in, in and of itself, if that isn't a, a, an offensive term, religious though it sounds. I have options. They might not be easy options. People might think that it's easy to just surrender to blind horror. It's not. <laughs> um, people might say that it's easy to sort of say, I choose happiness. Uh, that's not easy either. <laughs> uh, equally um, difficult is attempting to lift that finger and go for the plus side. But at least the choice is there to be made. There's a fork in the road. <clears throat> every second of existence, every microsecond of existence, at the very heart of everything that ever happens to anybody, some choice has to be made. That's where, that's the axis at which I believe the will stands. Some people don't like the term will. Fine. Use the term consciousness, whatever you want, whatever it is that prefers one thing over another and feels the need to both evaluate and make a choice and, if possible, intervene. That's what I would call the will. You can call it the endoplasmic reticulum if the word will doesn't work for you. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter. The symbol we use to describe what it is we refer to, assuming it's even characterizable as an it, but language seems to demand that we call it an it or whatever. The thing that makes the choice, the thing that evaluates the thing that is on the receiving end of the value is what I refer to as the will. Um, the thing that stands at the fork in the road and says, which side am I going to take? The thing that perceives itself to be subject to programming and wants to break free of that programming. We don't even have to be... Um, able to break free of, of the programming. We don't even have to um, understand the possibility of success, but we have to want to. 
The fact that I understand that I'm a puppet on strings and I don't want to be a puppet on strings is what I refer to. Whether or not free choice is possible is irrelevant to this point, this particular point I'm making. Free will, whatever. I, I'm conscious of the fact that I'm perhaps a cog in a gigantic, infinite perhaps, machine causality. I understand that. And maybe even I understand that I can't get out of it. But I want to get out of it. That's the context in which I use the term will.